When you're ready, Liam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, guys! Whoa. Hello, anyone? Hi. Hi. Oh, wow, what a nice crowd. Um, I'm Liam, Liam Bradley. Now, I would like to ask you one question. How many of you guys believe in imaginary friends? Anyone? I have five. Great, great, great. Well, I didn't. Until the beginning of the second semester, where it was revealed to me that there was someone helping me along the way throughout my MPX journey, and I've finally been able to meet this person. So, as, my, as I straighten up my collar here, allow me to introduce my imaginary friend, Leo. He's loading up a Skype thing. Wait, wait oh, is there an echo? Um, how do you get sound? <laughs> Sorry. Guys, look! It's Liam Neeson! He's my best friend! Isn't that awesome, everyone? Anyone? So, what are we gonna do now? Well, Liam needed help on a POL. So I, Liam Neeson, decided to build a time machine that will take us to the past months of the second semester of MPX. That's right, guys. A time machine. So, let's go to January, where Team Land has just completed the hydroponic system. And we're basically putting plants in the hydroponic system and yeah, 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 the fun to drink. So, this might seem like, well, basically, right, this presentation is fueled with the power of imagination. So it might seem like I'm just traveling around in circles. So, let's go back into the past! Woo! Right, we're in January. Look, there's 14-year-old me just outside. <laughs> So basically, we we're basically just, you know, planting plants in the hydroponic system. And I had this kid named Alex. He was really smart and cool. Yeah, I know. But um, we probably argued a lot, and we also fought a lot. Exactly, Leo Neeson. So basically, right, we fought a lot in the month of January. And we were basically getting no work done. And it was all just, you know, no work done, it was all terrible, we were all arguing with each other, and we also had a very diverse group in our team. So, we all basically just complained and, confl and had many conflicts. Let's move to April 1st, when we just got back from spring break. Right, we're traveling into April 3rd. Whoa! Oh, nice! As you can see, Look at me, and now it's just outside there, working together in harmony. We learned eventually that in the end, we all have to work together as a team in order to kill the competition. Besides, there was an even bigger threat approaching us. Yes, the Hydro Hero sent by Isabel Velasquez has made huge progress on their final project. But I am confident of the ultimate destruction of all other groups by team will be more than a group like the Hydro Heroes doesn't listen to reason. So, I want to give the Hydro Heroes a personal message from me. Hydro Heroes, <laughs> listen up. I don't know you. I don't have much experience with hydroponic tower systems, but I do know one thing. I do know that Team Land will rise from the ashes and claim their rightful place in history! 
All right. Right now, that's over with. Let's go to February, where we just learned how to use <coughs> fertilizer and NPK ratios. Whoa! Right, right now, we are in February. And we from this group are starting to learn how to tender plants in a hydroponic system. Now, I didn't know anything about fertilizer and pH levels, but all of a sudden I have to learn about NPK ratios and how to use fertilizer and all that just blah. I just couldn't understand it. I mean, it was just really hard to grow plants and allow them to live. So I advise Leo to talk to Mr. Koneko to try and learn more about how to choose the right fertilizer. And Liam eventually understood how to change the quality of the water That's so right. that the plants can live. Oh look, now we're in another class. This is Miss Calibro's class, and we were just learning about the Congo. Yeah, the Congo. And the Congo was one of the most vicious and savages places on Earth. And we had to learn a lot about African history and what the heck is happening. <laughs> right, I think we just had a malfunction with the time machine. But, wait. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is one of the most savage and dangerous places on Earth. Yes, and so to illustrate the DRC, we had to paint shoes. Shoes? Yes, shoes. So we sold these shoes to an African charity in the Congo. And the thing is that I knew nothing about African history and the struggles that happened in the Congo and why they happened. So basically, what hap so basically I learned all about African history and the suffering there and the we tragedy of the Congo. To make an artistic design for the shoe he was going to paint. And then he painted it with my assistance. He did a pretty good job. Right, let's go to April 28th. Whoa! Now we are just learning about Russian history and the Russian Revolution. Wait, what's going on? Oh, time machine? I think we really want to go to the Russian Revolution. Oh, oh my god, there's a pretty good at first. And I absolutely had no direction in making up the video at the start though. I basically thought that I could just make more clips and interviews and I'll just put it all together last minute and edit everything and cut things out. However, I also made this really nice intro, but it didn't really turn out well and didn't flow with the actual video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I know, there we go. when I watched it, all the group members looked almost as tough and awesome as me. Yeah, the intro was pretty awesome. But the rest of the video wasn't exciting. I wanted to make a great finish in the ending, but I didn't have enough time. You didn't have enough time. Exactly. Yeah, but 
I didn't have enough time to work on the ending, and it just ran out of time. <sighs> should have saved more time on editing and less time on filming. You should have also envisioned the video before you even filmed it. You must have the clips you filmed weren't even used in the video. And you also had to film more necessary clips in the same week you had to edit the entire video. Yeah, so the video in the documentary was bad, but it turned out okay at the end, so I'm happy. Ah, now. Now, thank you for joining us in our super awesome time traveling trip. Right. Yogis. Peace out. So, do you guys have uh, any questions for the P.O.L.? Anyone? Yes, Michael? Where did you meet Liam Neeson? <laughs> He's an imaginary friend, Michael. Oh. No, I'm just of course, it was, you know, it was really nice meeting Liam Neeson in my head. I mean, it was really cool. Anyone else? Mr. Kaneko? Questions, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions, questions for Liam. Any? What skill do you think you improved the most on? Um, skill I improved the most of was, um, well, it was really more like, you know, I guess the skill that I most improved on was video editing because the documentary was probably the most thing I was invested in. But also what I learned was um, teamwork and basically like how to work together as a team because as you can see in the POL, me and Alex just basically didn't get along in the first semester but we eventually set aside our differences and eventually just all came in and worked together. So that was really good. That was something I worked on. Yes, Danny. What was your driving factor during, throughout this semester? Driving factor. To be quite honest with you, I I didn't really have much of a driving factor <laughs> because like many of the things that we did in MPX was you know like you know it was very interesting, but I just didn't have much passion into it. I mean the <coughs> video I spent a long time on it working on it, and it turned out pretty okay. But that was because I was really more invested into it, and I really liked doing it. And but for the uh, rest of the year, I, my, one of the biggest driving factor was to just not letting my teammates down in, um, in the final project. And <coughs> I basically just tried to put in my share in order to uh, make Team Land great, even though we got second place, but you know, that's beside <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No questions? Okay, thank you, Liam.